Welcome back. Given an area of AB, the area of course is AB. If we then take the square root of that AB, we can then construct a square that has the square root of AB as its side so that the area which is now made up of a square is equal to the square root of AB squared and the areas would be the same except this is a rectangle and this is a square. So I'm going to show you a mechanical or a paper method how you can change or yeah, transform uh, a rectangle into a square. So let's get started. First of all, we need to construct a circle. Actually, we don't have to, but I think you'll understand the solution better if I show you with this circle. So the circle really becomes an aid to understanding. You don't have to construct a circle, as I will show you later. I'm, I'm, I'm putting this, I'm folding this in a way so that I can indeed create a circle for for this demo so that the demonstration will be more clear. Alright, so now we want to put it up to our, uh, well let's put it up to our to our measuring tool here, our ruler, and we want it to be four inches along the side. So we have one, one, two, three, four. Let's see, did I do that right? Okay, here we go. Yes, we want it to be one, two, three, four, four inches, and we want this to be ever so slightly curved. That's going to be the curve of the circle. so when we cut it like this we can now open it up and we're going to have a circle of 8 inches in diameter and of course a 4 inch, ra a four inch radius there we are and we need to create now a semicircle like so. Alright, let us suppose that we have a rectangle, so it's total B of 8 inches here. Let us suppose that we have a rectangle that is 5 by 3. B 1, 2, 3, 5 by 3, 3 times 3 times 5 would be 15 because we are creating I'm folding along the 3 inch mark this represents one side of the rectangle this is the 5 inch 1 2 3 4 5 and this is the 3 inch side 1 2 3 Alright, so if I um, if you notice that we have a line created by the crease that goes all the way until it hits the intersects the circle. This distance, which I will emphasize here, actually is 
the side of the square that would equal 15. Now that dimension then is just a little less than, let's say it's 3 and um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 eighths. 7 eighths. Let's see what that is. See how close we are. 3 plus 7 divided by 8. times, oh no, whoops, times the answer. And that's re remarkable. That's it. We got 15.1, which is extraordinarily close for being a mechanical method. So now we have a, a method, a way of calculating the, the, the square side or the side that would give us a square, given that we start out with a rectangle of some of any two dimensions which are not equal to each other. So that is what we're going to, this is where the idea comes from. Now I'm going to demonstrate the idea but without the circle. In this area, or in this part of the video, I've taken what? Let's assume that it's an arbitrary rectangle. It happens to have dimensions of 3 by 8 and a half. That's the area. So what we're searching for is the square root of the product. That is, the square root of the area would give us a side of a square that would have the same area as this rectangle. That area, by the way, is here. You can see that 3 times 8 and a half gives us 25 and a half square units. And right below that, I have found the square root of that number to come up with 5.049. So let's see how close we can get to that five point. Let's see. That equals five point zero four nine, which we can round it off to five point zero five. That would be hard to measure here. But let's see if we can do that. All right. The next part is to find the radius of the imaginary circle. Remember, we can do this because of that theorem that we worked on earlier. There is this, I, I have to add this width to the edge over here and then find the middle. So to do that, I find first the middle or the midpoint of the of the rectangle, like so. I'm going to emphasize it here so you can see it. Okay, let me crease it hard, and clean, so you can see it. Then I also want to find the middle or the midpoint of the height of this rectangle. And so here we are. Increase it hard, like so, and I'll mark it with a, with a center point. And uh, in order to get this half or that half onto here to find the 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 middle of the or the midpoint of the of the diameter, I have to bring this around and fold it so that it is perpendicular, so that this line passes through that midpoint and is perpendicular to the edge. So I'm reflecting it with this angle here. As you can see, this distance 
is going to be is going is now placed along the the edge where I can now mark it. So if I turn it over, I can well let's actually fold it. That's the beauty of folding paper. I can just fold it like that. Now when I open it, I now have a mark here. All right. Now what I want to emphasize is that this is now the radius of a circle, which of course you can't really see, but you have to imagine. That's the radius. Now radiuses of a circle are constant so that in this imaginary circle that you can't see I'm going to now make use of this radius to tell us what the square is. Okay, remember this is the radius so we bring that line around, 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 around and we get it right there. One, two, three, four, five. That's amazing, isn't it? We are, we have arrived at five and it was five point the actual um, square root. There we are. Now if you recall the dimension had to be was supposed to be 5.05 and we arrived at 5 with this mechanical method. So we're within 5 hundredths or uh, 1 twentieth of an inch off. That's a remarkable that's remarkable as far as I'm concerned considering that we're doing this by hand. Now let's cut the... All I did is that I folded it because this square has two equal sides. I just reflected that edge along this line and now I'm going to cut right there's the length. Oh there's the five. I'll count it off again. There's one, two, three, four, five. And now I will try my best here to get a square cut. Always cut easy the first, a little firmer the second, a little firmer still. Get these out of the way, get that out of the way. Now I can claim that this square has the same area as this rectangle. Thank you. See you in the next tutorial.